Hi again, everyone. And today we're going to uh, present the second session on the scripting cam. On today's demo, we will present uh, how to set up a policy for monitoring with the usage of scripts. We will show that it can be as easy as just using a one-liner, which sometimes sysadmins love so much. Um, we would also discuss a point where you may use one-liner or even a script, but sometimes you need to consider the fact that not all Unix are alike. Um, and finally, we will consider the usage of containers for the scripting and how this can add semantics with regard to the business um, of um, your environment. So here is my um, tool site 10.5 system. I have one policy here that I'm going to use for um, registering our monitoring for automation with scripts. Let's edit that existing um, existing policy. In this case, I have a single stack system, meaning it's a tool site system with the presentation server. Uh, <clears throat> the integration service and patrol agent all stacked up on a single VM. I already have a policy in here for Hadoop KM, which we are going to gracefully ignore for now. Let us just set up a new type of monitoring. Selecting scripts for monitoring, I can actually have three options. One would allow me to just load the top level application class to benefit from agent actions of <clears throat> trying out uh, some scripts. The other one is the one we're going to use now, and this specializes in executing scripts running locally or remote, where the KM utilizes an SSH connection to execute on it. And third is basically a simple imp uh, implementation of the KM, which does not require a Java to exist with the patrol agent. This one is basically a feature where the, uh, the patrol agent executes a configured command and acts the data and sets the data accordingly. However, in the demo today, we will look at the second option that allow us to run scripts locally or remote. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to register a device for monitoring. And here you can specify the device name. Mm. I will pick up a device, let's say, I can actually force a different IP. So if the device is, is actually uh, running with multiple uh, network adapters and I want to access it to a certain one, I can. In this case, I don't need to. <clears throat> I can actually say that I want to categorize all the scripts of this uh, policy mm, to run under container so I can actually set up a category which will which contains those. For example, um, my mm, uh, IT setup. Um, the basic settings for SSH connection, including the timeout to set it up and re-establishing a polling cycle. I can then always also provide the user and password to connect to the system, whether that's local or remote. If certificates is what I want to use, then fine. In this case, it's going to be standard user and password. Now I'm actually going to add the script as well. <clears throat> so this is the first script I'm going to add to execute on that host. Mm, let's name it um, file system and the script itself can be one or combination of several things. It can actually be a path to a script as we indicated in the first session, like uh, myscript.sh. But it can also be a one-liner. When it's a one-liner, you don't even have to run a script. Uh, in this case, I decided to use this one-liner. Um, basically, the one-liner utilizes mm, the data returned by a command called df-lkh, 
we chose the utilization of the different file systems mounted on the server. I can just paste this in here, provide no arguments, there is nothing needed. I can check if some content is returned in the demo right now I will not. I will allow the script or the one liner in this case to run in 10 minutes or less and actually the collection cycle will be 61 seconds. I can now click OK and the script is added. I click OK. OK again. Save. And basically that's it. My system is now ready for monitoring as defined. Moving over to the monitoring dashboard, I can actually identify the different devices. This is actually the device. Clicking on it, I can see uh, my scripts. And you can see the type of it is, of course, Linux, Unix shell scripts. This is the monitor type I selected I want to enable. <coughs> Underneath that, I have something I earlier created. Now, however, uh, we're, we're going to see the one inside the container I created in this demo called My IT Setup. When I open this, you can see here that a device mapped uh, for running my one-liner. It's basically, as I indicated, the name I gave this general execution is file script utilization. <clears throat> and now the KM and a uh, site is actually running. First, uh, it's actually being set up and the system is checking that this, the one-liner is valid. If not, then it will set up um, the values for me to know. So that would be the status of the script and the time it takes to run it. <clears throat> I'm waiting a bit of time. I may actually refresh this, um, see if anything was collected. This is the old one. This is the new. Expanding the new, I can see the devices earlier said, um, file system utilization. Now I actually see the file system application class gets created. And underneath that, I can see the KM discovered the different file systems. Looking at one of them, for example, the boot, I can see that the value is currently marked as eight for the value. And that's probably because the percentage of the boot file system in the usage uh, in percentage is roughly 8%. And this is, this is basically it. Moving to uh, the script itself, then we can actually see here that I'm using uh, the data, uh, basically the command line. Mm, I actually remove some of the details, remove some extra spaces, and go one by line, one line, uh, one after another, and assemble a format that is valid uh, for the KM to consume. Now let's consider something else. Let's assume that I actually want to set up monitoring of the same on a Solaris machine. Well, here is the thing. Solaris is not exactly like Linux. I edit the policy and I can actually add another device. I want to add another device which I know of, helium.bmc.com. This is actually a Solaris Spark system. Let's assume I retain um, the default settings in here. I actually need a different user to log in, which is fine. So I'm going to type a different username and I will add a script. This time I'm going to call it uh, again uh, file system utilization. Now we're going to type in the one-liner, but here's the thing. This is actually a Solaris system, and it doesn't exactly execute the shell command as a Linux system would. Let me demonstrate what I mean. In here, I have the two commands in two different lines. Upper line is running on Linux. Lower line is on Solaris. 
I open a command line on a Solaris box. Switch to that system. And I am actually typing now the command that's supposed to run on Linux. And it doesn't run. It actually says there is a problem, etc. That's fine. Now I'm going to type the one that I modified slightly for Solaris usage. Now we can see that actually there is a report with a type and a name, or type and the name, and then comma, a parameter, and a value. So obviously uh, the lines are not the same. And here you can see I actually assigned to a variable the output of a command. And, and uh, basically, after cleaning it up, I keep it inside the variable called x, and then I actually start the, the, the for, for loop on the content of that x variable. When looking at Linux, the one I tried before, I see that actually I utilize a feature that only is only available in, in, in Bash where I can actually have an entire command inside the for loop and enjoy that. So the point is, um, when you set uh, scripts up for monitoring on Unix systems, you need to think whether they are all alike in the way that they execute shell, or that actually um, you need to modify according to the exact vendor or the type of uh, OS and and version that's it so today on um, on the presentation this uh, session two uh, we saw how to use a one-liner how unixes are not always alike and how we can actually use co uh, containers where the policy named them to make more sense thank you